The opening scene is set in the year 1961 in Natchez, Mississippi, where we are introduced to a wealthy businessman named Mr. Van Weert. He owns a toy company and is currently seen interviewing a lady named Kobe Dellum for the position of his secretary. During the interview, Mr. Weert tells her about how God sought perfection while creating humans from dust. He believes that a plastic doll is incapable of sinning since it doesn't have a soul and that if humans were like dolls, God would be even more happy. But they also wouldn't get anything done. After reviewing Kobe's resume, Mr. Weird tells her that she isn't fit for this job despite her excellent records. When she tries to protest, a guy grabs her from behind and the camera pans out. A while later, Kobe regains her consciousness and finds herself in a house surrounded by human-sized dolls. Soon after, Mr. Weird welcomes her to his very own custom-designed dollhouse and explains that she will be there for the next seven days. He goes on to say that her qualifications were too good for for the position of secretary, which is why he has hired her as a pageant. Hearing this, she says that she has no interest in the position, but he tells her that she has no other choice. In a state of panic, Kobe tries to run away, but she is stopped by Mr. Weert's guard, Eustace, who can't speak due to the lack of a tongue. As Mr. Weert prepares to leave, Kobe pleads not to be left alone, to which he claims that she won't be. Not long after, Kobe learns that the human-sized dolls are, in fact, real people. They are simply dressed like dolls, wearing face masks and maintaining a statuesque position. Kobe asks about what is going on, and one of the human dolls, named Aurelia, tells her that she has been abducted by a crazy toy maker who is obsessed with dolls. According to her, Mr. Weird is looking for a perfect doll in order to find a mother for his son, Otis Van Weert. For this, he forces them to perform various tests as part of a pageant. Ones who do not measure up will get eliminated in the worst way. Another human doll named Harlene advises Kobe to take some rest before she is assigned with her first task. However, Kobe continues to check the doors and windows as she is only interested in getting out of here. Harlene says that she understands what Kobe is going through because she also reacted the same way when she was first brought here. Kobe wonders if the law wouldn't suspect if everyone who interviewed disappeared. In response, Harlene explains that they all come from different backgrounds. Aurelia was a dancer, Faye was a kindergarten teacher, and Bob Bonnie was directly abducted from her home. Harlene goes on to say that their efforts of escaping are useless because this place is built like a safe. As their conversation unfolds, Harlene reveals about Otis's mother named Ellen, who died two years ago. The official story states that she drowned in a swamp, but Kobe realizes that it's not true. Harlene then discloses the real incident. Mr. Weird caught his wife making out with another guy. As a result, he ordered Eustace to throw both of them into a well. Since that tragic event, Mr. Weird has been determined to find an ideal mother for his son. This makes Kobe realize that winning the pageant is the only way to get out of this mess. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by a loud bell ringing. Harlene hastily instructs Kobe to put on an outfit, take up a position, and stay still until she's asked to move. A short while later, Otis walks in and talks to the new doll, Kobe. He tells her that he hates clowns and decides to order Eustace to dispose of Kobe. In order to save herself, she shows him a magic trick in which she she makes his fire truck roll on its own. Here, it is revealed that Kobe actually possesses a telekinetic ability and that she can move things with her mind. This leaves the boy greatly impressed. He goes, <laughs> Later that night, Aurelia asks Kobe how she made the fire truck move, to which she replies that she learned it from her uncle, who used to do magic tricks. Aurelia appears to be jealous and accuses her of lying to win the pageant. Kobe claims that she doesn't want to be Otis's mother because it would also mean being Mr. Weird's wife. However, Aurelia believes that winning this would give her enough time to come up with an escape plan. As they converse, an alarm goes off, which implies that it is time for a test. Following this, Mr. Weird gets all of them seated across the dining table table and discloses a menu, crawfish cardinal, and terrapin soup. How does anyone know what the hell terrapin is? He then asks them to set up the crockery correctly within a minute. If they succeed, they will be considered as a perfect housewife. Everyone begins to arrange the table in a hurry. Desperate to win the task, Aurelia pulls off the perfect setting, unlike Kobe, who knocks over a water glass as she tries to copy what the others are doing. After the time expires, Mr. Weird holds a cattle prod in his hand while inspecting each of the dolls' table settings 
things. Aurelia passes the test, while Harleen and Kobe receive two and four points, respectively. Meanwhile, Faye makes the biggest mistakes, so she is stunned by the cattle prod before being thrown down the well. This indicates how high the stakes are and how perfect each doll needs to be for their continued survival. The following morning, Otis again visits the dollhouse and plays with Kobe. She shows the same magic trick of making his fire truck move. When the boys ask further about this trick, Kobe admits that it was a gift from birth. She says that she is different from others, just like Otis, who does not go to school and plays with dolls. This prompts the boy to reveal that he stopped going to school after being bullied by his classmates, as well as his teachers. Oh, little Otis, I can't imagine why. As their conversation progresses, Otis expresses that he wants Kobe to be his new mom. In response, she promises to be the best mom, if he convinces his father to free the other dolls. Convinced by her words, Otis goes to talk to his father that night. As he walks down the hallway, he overhears his father talking on the phone, asking for more time to increase the sale of his hand-sewn dolls. Seeing him in a horrible mood, Otis hesitates to bring up this topic. The next day, the bell rings, and the ladies hurriedly put on their costumes. Shortly after, Mr. Weird enters the dollhouse and announces their next test. To pass this test, the human dolls must blend an ironing spray and fold a shirt in a perfect manner. Before the task begins, he provides a brief history of Monsieur Sedou, the owner of Dauphine Street Laundry. As the three-minute timer begins, the ladies start working frantically. After the time elapses, Mr. Weird evaluates their work, starting with Harleen, who receives three points. Upon inspecting Kobe's shirt, he finds it excessively stiff as well as scorched. As a punishment for this, he forces her to place her hand on the ironing board and then presses it with a hot iron. Despite the excruciating pain, Kobe does not utter a single word. Aurelia passes the test as usual, while Bonnie is eliminated for her shirt emitting a foul odor. I said shirt, not shit, says Mr. Weird. Mr. Weird then informs the remaining dolls that there will be a final task tomorrow, and the one who excels in it will be declared the winner. In the aftermath of this event, Harleen helps Kobe in tending to her wounds. During this, she mentions that Mr. Weird has a liking for Kobe, since he could have eliminated her for scorching that shirt. In the meantime, Aurelia eavesdrops on their conversation and decides to murder Kobe. For this, she grabs a pointed metal spike and heads upstairs to Kobe's room. She stabs the spike through the clown costume, only to discover that it is just a mannequin. Just then, Harleen and Kobe appear from behind, revealing that they were already aware of her plan. How? Who cares? This infuriates Aurelia, who explains that she doesn't want to die. Kobe responds that neither of them have to die, because she has an escape plan and that they can walk through the front door. Aurelia warns that Eustace will hunt them down, but Kobe assures her that they can make it before their secret plan gets revealed. The following day, the three ladies dress up the mannequins in doll costumes, while they hide themselves behind curtains. A short while later, Mr. Weird, along with Eustace, comes to the dollhouse in order to announce their final task. While Mr. Weird converses with the mannequins, Kobe uses her telekinetic ability to unlock the exit door, and the trio slip out of the dollhouse. Once outside, Kobe has a change of heart and decides to fulfill her promise to become Otis's best mother. <laughs> Why? Aurelia and Harleen choose not to waste any more time there and make a run for it, while Kobe enters Mr. Weird's mansion in search of Otis. On the other hand, Mr. Weird asks a biblical question, but when he does not receive any answers, he finally realizes that they are mannequins. In the mansion, Kobe locates Otis and asks him to accompany her because his father is a sick man. But in an unexpected turn of events, the boy stuns her with a cattle prod, monkey see, monkey do, causing her to collapse. Meanwhile, Harleen trips and falls, so she pleads with Aurelia for help. However, Aurelia intends to kill her for being too slow and loud. She grabs a large rock to smash her head, but at the same time, she is shot from behind by Eustace, who then kills Harleen as well. Afterwards, Kobe regains consciousness and finds herself restrained to a table. Mr. Weird stands beside her and congratulates her for winning the pageant. He reveals that Otis's vintage doll has a porcelain head with a hearing device planted in it, which is how he learned of their plan. As a result, he devised a final test of faith to see who would risk their lives for his son. After this revelation, a large doll mold is pressed against Kobe's body, encasing her in porcelain. Her distress causes her telekinetic abilities to flicker the lights, but it's not strong enough to help her escape. In the next scene, Kobe, in her doll form, is seen serving tea to Mr. Weirth and Otis. At this moment, two robed women appear in front of them. They are revealed to be the witches from Mr. Robichaux's academy. They use their power 
power to freeze Mr. Weird and Eustace and break the doll mold, setting Kobe free. A young witch explains that they would have arrived earlier, but Kobe's spells were too weak. Kobe appears puzzled, so the witches clarify that she is one of them and they are here to rescue her. Otis pleads with them to not leave him behind, so Kobe agrees to take him along on the condition that he will never return to his father. As they leave, the witches burn down Mr. Weird, Eustace, and the dollhouse with a flick of their hands. In the final scene, we see Kobe dropping Otis off at Miss Robichaux's academy. Before departing, she suggests that he use a different name for his own safety. Just then, a girl approaches her, and Otis introduces himself as Spaulding before heading inside with her. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.